powerful, impactful, life-changing. This is the teaching ministry of Apostle Faith Manoeira, where supernatural things are happening through the anointed Word of God. This prolific preacher and dynamic teacher of God's Word is changing lives all over the world. Are you ready? Because your life will never be the same. Your success is directly related to your submission to God's Word. We are not here to do what we think or feel. We are here to do what God's Word has approved. If you're going to succeed in life, God must come first in everything you do. Faith in God does not fail because its origin is God. Here is Apostle Faith Man Owen. Moving into greater strength of the Spirit. God wants us to flow in the supernatural strength. There is a limit to what we can do with our natural strength, but there is no limit to what we can do when the strength of the Spirit is in operation. When the strength of God's Spirit is in operation, you do the extraordinary. The extraordinary, doing the extraordinary is a result of the strength of the Spirit in operation. The scripture said it's not by might, it's not by power, but by my Spirit. It is by the Spirit of God that we accomplish extraordinary things. It is by the Spirit that we break forth into greater dimensions of the experience that God wants us to have. So today we're sharing moving into greater strength of the Spirit. You know, there are different manifestations of the Spirit. There are different operations of the Spirit. But for we to step into greater strength of the Spirit, we have to see God's Word as a priority. We have to see God's word as our priority. If the word of God is not your priority, you cannot flow in greater strength of the spirit. God's word coming into your spirit helps you to see things from God's perspective. You know, the scripture established in Colossians 3.16, it said, let the word of Christ dwell in you. Let it. It is a decision to allow God's word to come into your spirit. The word of God cannot come into your spirit without you opening up your spirit to him. The word of God said he knocked at the door. He's waiting for who is going to open for him to come in. God's word coming to your spirit based on your attitude towards God and his word. For we to step into greater strength of the spirit... We have to dwell in the word. There is something about God's word that keeps you going even when the situations are not right. The situation in the natural may look like nothing is going to work out for you, nothing is going to come out good for you, but if you have the word of God in your spirit, that word becomes the source of boldness. That word becomes the, the source of energy that is required for the journey of purpose. The word of God in our spirit is what keeps us going even when the situation is not in our favor. With that word in our spirit, we can create an atmosphere where we can experience possibilities as a result of the word of God. I said this yesterday to some people. I said, whenever God wants to change your life, he gives you his word. Whatever you do with that word, is what will become your future. Whenever God wants to change your life, he gives you the word. Whatever you do with that word becomes your future. Your future is directly related to your attitude towards God's word, how you respond to the word of God, and what you choose to do with his word is what creates the future. A lot of people want to have a great life. They want to have a great future. They want to have a great relationship. They want to have a great destiny. But they don't have a foundation that is consistent with the principles of God's word. 
They don't have a foundation that is consistent with the principles of God's word. If the foundation is not based on God's word, it is an indication that we cannot have the God kind of experience. If you are going to have the God kind of experience, it simply means that your foundation must be consistent with God's word. To step into the greater strength of the spirit, we need to consistently make God's word the foundation for our way of doing things. We have to make the word of God the foundation for our way of doing things. You know, a lot of people could tolerate the word of God. Maybe once in a while, they just say, okay, let me just do what God's word said. And they, they tolerate the word. God is not looking for God that will tolerate his word. God is looking for people that will be committed to his word. It is commitment to God's word that determines the flow of supernatural energy. If you want energy to continue the journey, if you want extraordinary strength for your assignment, then God's word must have you must be the final place for you. God's word have to be the very foundation that decide your way of thinking, that decide your conversation, that decide your attitude towards life, that decide how you look at the things of life. And if God's word is not in my spirit, it's a proof that I cannot win in life. If God's word is not in your spirit, it's a proof that you cannot subdue situation and the challenges of life. The word of God in our spirit is what empowers us to have the flow of the spirit. The word of God in our spirit. So for you to step into greater strength, there are key things I want us to understand. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Number one. If you want to flow in greater strength, someone, he said, blessed is the man that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. This is powerful. If you want to flow, if you want to step into greater strength of the spirit, this scripture must speak to you. This scripture must determine your action. He said, blessed is the man that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. We cannot have an ungodly lifestyle and expect God to back up our action. We can have an ungodly lifestyle and expect to walk in the greater strength of the spirit. He said, blessed is the man that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. The counsel of the ungodly is a counsel that does not recognize the integrity of God's word. The counsel of the ungodly is that counsel that comes to people that does not recognize the integrity of God's word. It is a counsel that does not exalt the lordship of Jesus. It is a counsel that does not glorify God. So the writer said here, the, 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 the man who was talking in some words said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, because the counsel of the ungodly godly would distance you from the things of the spirit the counsel of the ungodly would distance you from the things of the spirit the counsel of the godly cannot help you to flow in the knowledge of the will of god will not help you to flow in the things of the spirit the counsel of the ungodly so he said you're blessed is the man so you are blessed when you choose not to follow after the counsel of the ungodly you are blessed when you choose not to allow the counsel of the ungodly to betray your relationship with God. You are blessed when you choose not to open door to the counsel of the ungodly, even when it's going to bring financial benefit, but it's going to ruin your relationship with God. Have you seen counsel that brought financial benefit, but it will ruin people's relationship with God? The ungodly counsel can open door for success, but it's not a good success. God said to Joshua, if you meditate on this Lord day and night, you will make your way prosperous and you will have a good success. If Joshua is going to have a good success, Joshua was going to function based on the counsel of God's word. He has to make the word of God the foundation for his way of doing things. So verse 2 said here, I said, but his delight is in the law. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in the Lord does he meditate day and night. If you want to tap into supernatural strength, if you want to get into greater things of the spirit, you have to be a person who exalts God's word above measure. I was praying this morning. Then I said to the Lord, I said, my greatest desire in life is to spend time with God. 
My greatest desire, I was writing it down, my greatest desire is to spend more time with God in his word, to spend more time with God in the place of prayer. My greatest desire is to have intimacy with God, to have a, a relationship with God that produces results, that changes the lives of other people. This is my desire. And here in some one verse 2 he said, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Your delight, what is your delight? God wants your delight to be his word. This is how you step into greater strength of the spirit. When your delight is the word of God. Jesus was sharing in St. John Gospel chapter 8. He said, if you continue in my word. St. John Gospel chapter 8 verse 30. A portion of it he said, if you continue in my word. You will be my disciples indeed. If you continue in my word. There are many reasons why people can continue in God's word. Especially when they don't see manifestation. When they don't see results. When they don't, things are not working according to the expectation. The tendency to follow ungodly cancel is there. This is why we serve God by faith and not by feeling. He said in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7, he said, For we walk by faith and not by sight. If you want to go by feeling, your feeling can betray your relationship with God. If you go by feeling, you'll be disconnected from the purpose of God. If you go by feeling, you're going to miss out on God. You walk with God by faith. It is by faith that our relationship with God becomes productive, becomes effective, becomes useful. It is when we walk by faith. He said the just shall live by his faith. Not by worry, not by anxiety, not by depression, but the just shall live by his faith. Can I say this to you? Faith in God. God is required if you're going to flow in the things of the Spirit. I said faith in God is required if you are going to flow in the things of the Spirit. You see, feeling your faith is so important. Second Corinthians 5 verse 7, it says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. That simply means faith is your weapon. Faith is your resources. And that faith is a product of the Word of God. I said your faith is a product of God. God's word. Faith is a product of God's word. We can never add grow teachings on faith. Teachings on faith, we cannot say, oh, I've had teachings on faith before. I don't want to. Let me say this to you. You need teachings on faith daily to be able to withstand the situations and the circumstances of life. Your faith has to flourish for your life to flourish. If you want your life to flourish, if you want your dream to flourish, if you want your vision to flourish, your faith has to flourish. For your faith to flourish, you have to consistently dwell in the world. You have to consistently dwell in the word of God. Now let's look at that scripture. Psalm 1 verse 2 said, But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in the Lord does he meditate day and night. This man have decided to organize his life from the neighborhood of God's word. This man have decided to allow his way of thinking to be influenced by God's word. This man have decided to function according to the word of God. And he said here in verse 3, And he shall be like a tree. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. There is a refreshing of the spirit. When we meditate on the word of God, we experience the refreshing of the spirit. There is a refreshing that comes. You know, in John 15 verse 3, said, Ye are cleansed by the word which I have spoken to you. This is how you're being cleansed. You see, you are cleansed by the word which I have spoken to you. So God's word that comes to us comes with his ability to empower us to function in the will of God. I cannot truly function in God's will when I'm ignorant of God's word. You cannot truly function in God's will when you are ignorant of God's word. The scripture said you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. It is the applied truth that brings freedom. A lot of people know the truth, but the truth has not made them free. It is when we apply the truth. James chapter 1, when James was writing, he said that the doers of the word is blessed. Who is blessed? The man who consistently abide in doing the word. This is how you step into greater strength of the spirit. It is by the word of God you step into greater strength of the spirit. If you're weak spiritually, it's an indication that you need to be fed spiritually. 
I said, if you are weak spiritually, if you see yourself, you can't pray the way you're supposed to pray. You can't read the word the way you're supposed to read the word. You are no more witnessing. You are no more passionate about going to church. You're no more passionate about praying in the spirit. You're no more passionate about evangelism. You're no more passionate about giving and supporting the work of the ministry. You're no more passionate about the things of the spirit. It is an indication that you need to feed your spirit with the word of God. Go. It's an indication that you need to feed your spirit with the word of God. Because if your spirit is not being fed with God's word, there's going to be spiritual witness. You become tired in the things of the spirit. There are people right now, their energy level concerning the things of the spirit has dropped. They are no more zealous. They are no more passionate. The drive is not there. The energy is not there. They used to be committed. They used to be prayerful. They used to be people that pray for others and miracle signs and wonder happen. But right now, the zeal is gone. The passion is gone. The drive is gone. And this is why you got to feed your spirit. This is why you got to feed your spirit. You feed your spirit consistently as you can manifest the glory of the Father. You feed your spirit consistently. Your spirit man survives on God's word. I said your spirit man survive based on the word of God. This is how your spirit man survive. It is based on God's word that your spirit man survive. If your spirit is going to be strong, if your spirit is going to be full of energy, if your spirit is going to be full of power, it's because the word of God is going in day and night. This is why we do this broadcast every day. Not because we're looking for something, because there are people that can, they, they, they are not well fed, they are losing their faith, they are losing their zeal, they are losing their passion for the things of God, then God gave me a vision of daily broadcast that you need to bring the word to my people. Get back into the word. That is your root. Let me say this to you. If you think that reading the word of God will come natural to you, you're lying to yourself. It takes discipline to read the Bible. It takes discipline to open this book called the Bible to read it. It's not going to come to you natural. This is where a lot of people are not reading the word. This is why a lot of people are not reading the word because they think it's going to come natural to them. No, the flesh will contain. Have you noticed that you can watch a movie for two hours, you can watch a movie for three hours, but sometimes you can't even read the Bible for 20 minutes. Somebody can watch a movie for three hours, they go for movie, they go for this vacation, they go for this, which is very good. Nothing wrong in going for movies, nothing wrong in going for vacation. Those are good things to do. But do you notice that you can sit on the television? Do you know you can notice sit on the social media for hours, but you cannot read the Bible? That simply means there is a spiritual war. That is at work. Something is going. The enemy is trying to take advantage. Is trying to keep you away from the world. Because if he can keep you away from the world, he can keep you away from your strength. If he can keep you away from the word of God, he can keep you away from the strength you need. You are so rich in strength when the word is coming into your spirit. I work hard daily as a preacher, as a teacher of God's word to read this Bible. I woke up this morning, I was listening to the audio Bible. I was listening to this audio Bible, read the book of, uh, uh, read the book of uh, Colossians to me. This audio Bible, reading it to me, reading it to me, I want to listen to it. I want to listen to it. There are certain things I listen to. The reason for it, my spirit man survives based on the word of God. There is a spiritual dryness. It's not a good place for anyone to be. There is a spiritual dryness in the lives of so many believers. They are dry. Then you see it in their attitude. You see it in their character. You see it in their conversation. You see it in their way of doing things because they are dry. There are many that are backsliding right now. They are walking away from the faith. The Bible talk about the departure from the faith in the last days. The many, he said, iniquity will abound and the love of many will was called. Iniquity will abound. There are people that are walking away from God, walking away from the things of the Spirit because iniquity has abound. They are walking away. They used to be committed. They used to be passionate. They used to be people that go for soul winning. They used to be aggressive when it come to the kingdom. Iniquity will abound and the love of many will was called. We are in a time where people have become high-minded. 
We are in a time where a lot of people have become high-minded. They are no more kingdom-minded. They are no more word of God-minded. They are walking away from the things of the Spirit. They are walking away from serving the Lord. They are no more committed like the way they used to be committed. A lot of people are walking away in this last days. There are so many churches that are being sold right now. That I was talking to some people. I said, there are, when revival break up in places like Europe, like England, there was great move of God in England in 18th century. Great move of God. Things were happening. But most of those churches have become a cinema hall right now. Most of those churches are for sale. This was the same place the fire of God came. This was the same place there was a move of God. I noticed something. That your work with God will be sustained by your commitment to God. This is my observation. My observation is, if you are not praying, if you are not in the word of God, you will soon start backsliding. Yes, I'm noticing that. If you don't get into this word every day, if you don't pray every day, friend, you're opening door for the enemy. You are opening door for your spiritual downfall. If you are not praying, there is a vision I had from the Lord many years ago. You know, the Lord said to me, the more you pray, the more you see. In a vision, a dream, he said, the more you pray, the more you see. This morning, I was writing that down. That vision happened many years ago. I was writing it down. I have to remind myself what God told me. He said, the more you pray, the more you see. The more you pray, the more you're being energized. Can I say this to you, people of God? We are living in a time where people are losing the fire. Where people are losing their fire, where people are losing their passion, they, 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 they are focusing more on their need instead of focusing more on God. You know what the enemy did? The enemy wants you to focus on your need. The enemy wants you to talk more about your need, more about your problem, what you're going through in your marriage, what you're going through with your children. He knows that the more you talk about that, you will not have time to spend time with God. But if you will spend time with God, the wisdom to deal with your marriage issue will come. The wisdom to deal with your marriage issue will come. The enemy wants you to be talking about the situation and all the problems, and you will never spend time to read the word. You will never spend time. It, when your source of energy is disconnected, you're out. If your source of energy is being attacked, you're out. If your source, of, if you're disconnected from the source, if you're disconnected from the source, you know, we have these palm trees around and one day I told someone, if you want to check out what happened to people spiritually, go cut off the palm tree from the tree and leave it for one week. You will come back, you will notice the skin, will, the, the leaves will begin to wither, things will begin to die because it has been cut off from the branch, from the source, sorry. That was why the Bible said, every branch in me that beareth no fruit, he take it away. Once you are out of the source, once a branch is of the source, it begins to get dry. This is what has happened to so many Christians right now. There are people that used to be on fire for God many years ago. They used to be serious. They used to be passionate. They used to have a strong fire. But right now, my friend, they are, the fire is gone. The passion is gone. They are no more enthusiastic about the things of the Spirit. The enthusiasm is gone. The passion is gone. The drive is gone. People of God, listen to you. Listen to this. You are the one to keep your spiritual motivation high. You are responsible for your spiritual motivation. You are responsible for increasing your spiritual energy. Nobody's going to do this for you. No matter how I love you and care for you, I will never do your praying for you. I will never do the meditating of the word for you. I will never do praying for you. You are the one to get back into the world to meditate. A friend said to me this many years ago, I will never forget it. He said, no matter how you love your flocks, you will never be the one to do the word for them. No matter how you love your flock, no matter how you love the people you pastor, you will not be the one to do the word for them. You can teach them, you can pray for them, but they have the responsibility of applying the word. The question I'm asking you today, are you declining spiritually or you're rising up spiritually? 
Are you making progress in your walk with God? Paul was writing, he said, examine yourself to know whether you are still in the faith. I want to read a scripture to you and this is what is happening right now. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, 1 Timothy chapter 4, he said, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith. In the latter time, he said, the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time that some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirit. Do you know why a lot of Christians become gullible? Because most of them are not in the world. Most Christians cannot tell the difference between a false prophet and a real prophet. They think that a false prophet will come and say, Oh, I am a false prophet. Oh, I am a false prophet. No, the false prophet doesn't say he's a false prophet. A false prophet does not say he's a false prophet. A false prophet will teach from the Bible. A false prophet will prophesy from the Bible. But how do you know a false prophet? Jesus said, By their fruit we shall know them. By their fruit, we shall know them. A false prophet are people who focus you more on results than to focus you on your work with God. False prophets are people who focus you more on results, on how to get results for your life, than your relationship with God. They don't talk about having a relationship with God. If someone comes to them for a problem, they don't tell them, give your life to Christ. They only look for a way to solve the problem as they can stay with them. They don't focus people on Jesus. They don't focus people on the gospel. They focus the people on what the need of the people. This is why for you to know a false prophet, you need to be in the word of God. They will always talk about you, about your problem. They want to talk about your problem, but they don't want to talk about Jesus. They don't want to talk about your relationship with God. They don't want to ask you, are you born again? Have you received Christ as your Lord and Savior? They don't talk about that on their broadcast. They don't talk about the Lordship of Jesus on their broadcast. They don't talk about that. The reason is because if they talk about Jesus, it means they are bringing people into the kingdom of God. And what the enemy wants to do is to take people's attention away from the Lord Jesus and put their attention on all kinds of stuff that is not consistent with the word of God. This is why we are having all of these challenges today. The people are more willing to attack the gospel than to spread the gospel. They are willing to attack the gospel. So look at what it said here. It said, now, first, first, first Peter, sorry, first Timothy 4, verse 1. In fact, Timothy 4, verse 1, it said, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirit and to the doctrines of devil. They will give heed to seducing spirit and to the doctrines of devil. He said, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience sealed with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meat which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. You can imagine this is what is going on right now. There is a major departure from the faith. Now, I want to read another scripture to you. It's also in Timothy. In Timothy, look at this. In Timothy chapter, 2 Timothy chapter 3, 2 Timothy chapter 3, 2 Timothy chapter 3 said, This know, this know also that in the perilous, that in the last days, perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own self, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, untangled and unholy. Look at what is happening right now. This is what we are seeing right now all over the world. We see people, men becoming lovers of themselves. It's a perilous time will come. Can I say this to you? We are living in a very critical time, people of God. We are living in a time where we, if we don't submit to the word of God, if we don't submit to the things of the spirit, we can become a victim of strange fire. I'm telling you, people of God, if we don't submit to the leadership of the Spirit, if we don't stay in the Word of God, we are going to become victims of strange fire. We need to check the teachings before you believe the teachings. You know, somebody can say, oh, this man is a very great man of God, but you need to check out their teachings with God's Word. No matter how great a person is, don't believe what they're teaching without checking it out with the Bible. Always use the word of God to check out what you're hearing. 
You got to prove it. You have to prove it. Now, you know, the scripture established in Romans chapter 12. I need to read this to us. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In Romans chapter 12, look at verse 1. He said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies at a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And look at verse 2 said, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is your responsibility that daily you renew your mind with God's word. It helps you to line up with God's thoughts. It helps you to develop a right sense of spiritual judgment that you can judge things in the light of God's word. Just that a preacher is popular and famous doesn't mean that what he's teaching is correct. That is why we have to judge it. This is why you have to judge what I teach. If you go back to the Bible, judge the things I teach. Don't just believe them. Judge them. Look at the word of God. Look at the things I teach. If it doesn't line up with God's word, unfollow me. You have the right to unfollow my broadcast. You have the right to unfollow me whether on Periscope or YouTube or whatever platform if what I am teaching is not in line with God's word. We are not here to force you to believe. We are here to communicate the truth. But you have to judge the things you're hearing whether it lines up with the word of God. So in Romans chapter 12 verse 2, look at what it said. In Romans 12 verse 2 it said, And be not conformed to this world. This is, this is what he said, Paul was saying. He said, don't be conformed to this world because a lot of people are conforming. A lot of preachers are conforming. People are, are losing their focus on God. People are losing their zeal for the things of the Spirit. People are losing their passion for the things of the Spirit because they, he said, I'm being not conformed to this world. They are conformed. They are conformed to this world. But he said, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove that what is that good that you will prove but you cannot prove things when you don't have the knowledge of his will you cannot prove it when your mind is not renewed you cannot prove it when your way of thinking negate the principles of the will of god you cannot prove it when your lifestyle is in opposition to the principles of the kingdom so this is why we need to renew our mind as we can boldly judge things as you can boldly you know there are a lot of people today they are they are, they are selling water and they told us that this is a miracle water you have to buy this water to get miracle it's not scriptural you cannot prove it biblically it's not correct it's not correct people of god i want to say it again on this broadcast it's not correct we are not expected to be buying water and we we'll call it miracle water and say if you buy it where is it in the scripture which scripture can you use to validate that teaching which scripture can you use to validate the teaching of buying an oil from a preacher? A preacher comes and is selling a bottle of olive oil. Nothing wrong in using olive oil. But when the preacher comes and tells you this oil is, is for $25, is for $50, it's a miracle oil, you need to buy it. That is not scripture. What scripture can you use to validate that? Let me say this to you, people of God. We are living in a perilous time. We are living in a time, if you're not careful, you'll be deceived. We are living in a time where a lot of people are losing the biblical principle and they are giving heed to seducing spirit because a lot of people don't want to judge it. They say, oh, you cannot judge that teaching. That man is a great man of God. That woman is a great woman of God. Even the Bible said, when one prophesied, let the rest judge. Let people judge what is being prophesied. It's in the scripture. There is time to judge things, to look at those things. He said the Berean Christians went back home to check out if what they are being taught was in line with the word of God. They went to judge it. They look at it. We have a generation of people who have become gullible that whatever someone is teaching, they don't want to look at the Bible to be able to know, is it the truth? You can't fool anyone to hell. People of God, you can't fool anybody to hell. For that reason, you need to judge the things you're hearing. You need to judge manifestation. It's not every manifestation that people said is the Holy Ghost that is the Holy Ghost. You need to judge prophecies. You need to judge word of knowledge. You need to judge word of wisdom. You need to judge the gifts of the Spirit. We can't just believe whatever people say and do. No. This is why Paul said here. Mm. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Makara do Sakaraba. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In, in, th thank you, Father. In, in Romans 12, verse 2, he said, And be not conformed to this world. Don't be conformed. Come on. He said, Be not conformed to this world. 
He said, but be a transfer as you read the Pauline epistles. As you read the gospel, it will help to renew your mind to begin to see things in the direction of the will of God. As you read the gospel, it will help you to see things from the perspective of the will of God. Get back into the world. He said, and be not conformed to this world, but be a transformed. Be a transformed. Because if you're not transformed, you'll be deceived. If you're not transformed, you're God gullible. You'll be taken advantage of. If you're not transformed, you don't know what the truth is, so you don't know what to expect. Can you know the difference between deception and truth? Sometimes deception is packaged like a truth and it's coming to people. Deception is packaged like a, a truth is coming to people. There are all kinds of things people are doing that we cannot prove it in the New Testament. We can't prove it. We can't prove it from Pauline teaching. We didn't see Paul doing those things. We didn't see Jesus doing those things. Can I say this to you, people of God? God can say to me right now and said, Apostle Vitman, I want you to take this water and prove it and give it to somebody to drink. She'll be healed. Now, I prove the water and I give it to somebody to drink it and they were healed. Doesn't mean that I will make a doctrine out of it. It was an instruction given. It's not something now I begin to pray for what I'm beginning to give to. That is not what God said. We should know the difference between when God gives us an instruction to do something and when it is not what we are supposed to keep doing. A lot of people are making doctrines and teaching out of a revelation that God gave to them. Then they made it. They don't. God said do it once. Then they're doing it all the time. <laughs> and then people start doing it and everybody thinks that that is what God. Yes, God said that. But the basis why he said that was for a particular situation. This is why we need to know the difference between a rhema and the written word. A rhema is a spoken word of God concerning a specific situation. God gave that word rhema. So you should be able to know the difference between a rhema and a written word of God. God can give you a word right now. I want you to do this. And when you finish doing it, then he tell you, don't do it again. Remember in Genesis chapter 22, when God spoke to Abraham, said, take your son Isaac to Mount Moriah. When he said that to Abraham, when Abraham was going, he was in the journey. He got to the place. He tied the hand of Isaac. He tied his leg. Then the word of the Lord came to him. He said, don't kill the boy. Don't slay him. If Abraham has gone ahead and killed Isaac, he was outside of the will of God. The word he started with was take Isaac to the place. Then he got to the place. God spoke differently. You need to understand that there is a spiritual flexibility when you walk with God. When you're walking with God, it's not a straight movement. Listen to this people of God. If you are walking with God, it is not a straight movement. This is why the scripture said, as many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You can be in a place and God said, your place, being in this place, your time has expired. I want you to go to the next place. So you should be able to know what God is doing by time. You should be able to know where God has hooked you or You should be able to know what God wants you to do. A lot of people are rigid and this is why they are victims of the things of the Spirit. They have become victims of spiritual experience because they are rigid. When it comes to the things of the spirit, there is what is called spiritual flexibility. I did a teaching on spiritual flexibility. I think you should be on YouTube. Look at for it on spiritual flexibility. Why you should be flexible when it comes to the things of the spirit. God can tell you, be doing this, be doing this, be doing this. You keep doing it, you keep doing it, you keep doing it. And then you come back and say, stop doing this, start doing that. You should be able to know when there is a change. A lot of people don't know when the change has occurred and they're still doing the same thing they're doing. This is why you need to train your spirit man as your spirit man can be alert towards the things of the spirit as you can easily flow with God. When he moves, you move. When he stay, you stay. When he advance, you advance. That was why the Bible said, and Enoch walked with God. He walked with God. They were walking together. Enoch was not ahead of God. Enoch was not behind God. They walked together. Enoch walked with God. That simply means as God is saying it, the man is doing it. But that cannot be a reality if for our case, except we stay in the world and in the place of prayer. Sometimes God has moved ahead of us while we're still behind. Sorry, we're still behind. Sometimes God has moved ahead of us, but we are still behind. He has moved ahead of us, but we're still behind. He doesn't want us to be behind. I prefer to walk with God than to be behind him.
I want to follow him. I want to flow with him. I want to flow with the things of the spirit. But that can only be a reality when we choose to follow the principles of his word and choose to live a life of prayer. Listen to these people of God. We are living in a critical time. We're living in a time where there are winds of doctrine. There are teachings that people are not questioning anymore. A few days ago, somebody sent me something where a man declared himself to be an antichrist, and they were giving people the mark of the beast. You know, you know the uh, the, 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 the this organization is in you know that is uh, around the. South, uh, you know, South America, trying to remember where this organization is right now, and they just came into the U.S. and they they're giving people the mark of the mark called six six six. You know, it's an organization. The man have declared himself to be an antichrist. You know, and he was telling people that they don't need Jesus; they need him. He's talking that. You know, so you see a lot of deception that is going on in the system. If you are not careful, you can easily submit to a false prophet and don't miss a false prophet because. False most prophet pray, they pray, they shout, they do things that can easily make you think that there is God here. This is why you need to get into the word of God as the spirit of deception will not ruin your life. We are living in a perilous time. We are living in one of the challenging times that Paul, the, the, the apostle Paul never lived in this kind of time. This is a very challenging time. But Paul spoke about this time. That was why Paul said, perilous time will come. He, he, it was a prophetic word. When Paul spoke, he said, perilous time will come. He said, many will depart from the faith. You know, one of the things that Jesus was sharing when it comes to Matthew 24, he said, iniquity will abound and the love of many will was called. We are living in a very strategic moment of history. This is why you need to get into the world. This is why you need to keep company with people who are doing the world. You can't be moved by the things you see. You need to listen to the Holy Ghost. You can't be moved by what people are doing. Ask God, is these people connected to you? Holy Spirit, are you the one doing that job there? Holy Spirit, are you the one working in that ministry? Because right now we have familiar spirit that prophesy. We have familiar spirit that is doing all kinds of uh, magic that they call miracles. A lot of people are doing magic, not miracles. They are doing magic and not miracles. So if you are not careful, you can become a victim of witchcraft. You can become a victim of magic because a lot of people are not reading the Bible. And if you're not reading the word of God, if you're not meditating on the word of God, you will not be able to judge things in the right context. People of God, get back to your word. Get back to praying in the spirit. Get back to meditating on the word. Don't be carried away by signs and wonder. The Bible said these signs shall follow them that believe. It didn't say we will chase the signs. He said the sign will follow those that believe. In my name, they will cast that devil. If you stay with the word of God, you can pray for the sick yourself. If you stay with the word of God, you can lay hands on yourself to recover. If you stay with the word of God, you can drive a demon yourself. Why will you be running around from place to place looking for someone to pray for you to be delivered when you have the word of God? When you have the word of God? Because a lot of people are refusing to meditate on the word. So they are running from place to place. Who will deliver me? Who will set me free? I need to be delivered. I'm looking for a word. I'm looking for this. No! Get into the word of God. Get into the Bible. Meditate on the word of God. God will send you teachers. He will send you people that will be able to bring relevant word to you. Messages that will help you stay in faith. People of God, listen. We are living in the last days. You gotta be careful. You gotta be watchful. You gotta be alert because there is an evil out there. Ruining the lives of people, destroying the marriages of people. It's not everyone you see that should lay hands on you. You gotta be careful who lays hands on you. You gotta be careful who you open your spirit. I was telling my wife the other day, I said, I don't watch, I don't just see people and watch them. I don't just see people and watch them. No, I don't just see people and just say, Oh, I want to watch this man. No, I, I gotta be, I gotta be listening to the Holy Ghost. Do you want me to watch this people? Do you want me to connect with this person? Do you want, and my spirit is sensitive once I look at it. If it's not God, in the next one minute, I turn it off because I don't want pollution in my spirit. 
I don't want pollution in my spirit. There are things I see. It is easy to get things into you, but it's not easy to bring them out. I'm telling you, it is easy to get stuff into you, but it's not easy to bring them out. This is why a lot of people are suffering from all kinds of affliction because they open up their spirit to witchcraft. They open up their spirit to an individual that was practicing occultism, but is covering it in the name of apostle, in the name of prophet, in the name of pastor. In the name of evangelist, so they didn't know that this is witchcraft. I live in Africa where people do all kinds of dumb things. I've seen people do all kinds of dumb things to grow a church, to grow a ministry. But let me say this to you, we're living in the last day. If you are looking for a church to attend or a ministry to connect with, the first thing you have to look at for what are they teaching? Are they teaching that Jesus is Lord? Are they teaching that he's coming back again? Are they teaching the biblical principle how to work by faith, how to believe the word of God, how to speak the word of God. Are they talking about the finished work of Jesus? Those are the things to look up for. Are they preaching the finished work? People of God, listen to this. You will not be deceived. Your blood will not be shed. The blood of Jesus has been shed already and God is calling you into a life of victory. It's time to stay with the word. It's time to make the word of God your final authority. If the word does not be say it, I'm not going to believe it. You know, someone said, told me something, said they have been seeing all of this number. You know, some people say they have seen the number 333, 444, 555. You know, they have seen all those numbers. Let me say this to you. Whatever number you saw, if it's not in the Bible, don't believe it. I want to make it clear on this broadcast. Whatever thing you're seeing in your dream or in your vision, if you check it out with the Bible and it's not consistent with the word of God, don't believe it. The enemy is out there in the realm of the spirit to transfer junk into the spirit of people, to transfer people to things to people. You gotta be careful. The Bible said, look at the scripture we'll read here. I want us to read the scripture again. Uh, Romans 12 verse 2. In Romans 12 verse 2, it said here, it said, I'm being not Transformed to this world, but be it transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. When your mind is renewed, you will know you will prove it. A lot of people are not proving things, they are just believing whatever they see, they are just accepting whatever they say. No, you have to judge your dream with the word of God, you have to judge your prophecy with the word of God, you have to judge the vision with the word of God. You have to judge that trance with the word of God. You have to use God's word to judge what you're seeing, what you're hearing, and what you're observing. If it is not consistent with God's word, don't take it. Rebuke it because the enemy is trying to be funny. He's trying to take advantage of you. Thank you, Father. Lord, I pray for your people all over the world. I pray for your people all over the world watching this broadcast right now. I pray that you'll be sensitive to the things of the Spirit. I pray you'll be sensitive to the Holy Ghost. I pray you'll be sensitive to the Word of God. I pray you'll be sensitive to the will of God. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you'll be hungry for the Word of God. You'll be hungry for the Word of God. May your devotion with God increase. May your passion for the things of the Spirit increase. Makula Lakida Dakrata said, I pray for you right now that the power of God will come upon you. I pray for you right now that the anointing of the Spirit will rest upon you. I decree and I declare that the wisdom of God is coming upon you right now. The wisdom of God is coming upon you right now. The wisdom of God is coming upon you right now. The wisdom of God is coming upon you right now. No more deception. Whatever that you have taken to your spirit that is not of God, may it flush out in the name of Jesus. I pray right now for supernatural intervention for God's people all over the world. In Jesus' mighty name, we prayed. Amen. If you are watching this broadcast right now and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'd like you to say this after me. Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth. I believe in my heart that God have raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Father, for saving me.
Amen. If you pray this prayer with me, it means you're born again. The Holy Ghost is going to lead you from this day forward and you will not remain the same. Right now, I want to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's Faith Man Teaching on YouTube. It's Faith Man Teaching on YouTube. Also, I want to encourage you to keep watching FinishWorkTV.com. FinishWorkTV is an online TV that streams 24-7 every day, bringing the Word of God to people all over the world. And also, if you want to reach out to me, on Facebook is Faithman of Weather. On Facebook, you can send me friends request on Facebook is Faithman of Weather or Faithman of Weather mean on Facebook. So you can connect with me on Facebook. Today, I want to encourage you to consider partnering with this ministry. Listen to this partnership goes a long way to help us to keep bringing this message to more people around the world. We live in the last days. If people who do evil will support evil, we that are, that are people of righteousness should support righteous things. Today, I want you to give your best gift, whatever your best gift may be, whatever you will give today to support the preaching of the gospel. It will help many people to receive this teaching I'm doing. It, I, I was praying this morning, I said, Lord, I want this message to spread all over the world. Lord, I want this message. For this message to spread, both of us can partner together. I want you to consider sowing into the ground of this ministry as we will take this message to more people all over the world. You can do it on PayPal or you can do it through the MoneyGram. If you want to do it through MoneyGram, you can inbox us on Facebook. I will send you all the information, all the information you need to send it through MoneyGram. But on PayPal, it is faithmanteaching at gmail.com. On PayPal, it is faithmanteaching at gmail.com. Someone should go out there today and say, Apostle, I just want to encourage you to keep teaching this message. We have to pay for the internet that we use to be able to stream these teachings to people every day. We do multiple broadcasts. So give your best gift today. Make a sacrifice to help somebody hear this gospel. We're living in the last days. There is a lot of false good out there. There's a lot of false prophet out there deceiving God's people. Let us help the people of God to hear the sound word of God that will help them change their lives. So today, go to PayPal. It's faithmanteaching at gmail.com. Faithmanteaching at gmail.com on PayPal. You can also go to the Finish Work TV, uh, www.finishworktv.com, www.finishworktv.com, and go to the partner button and type partner, and we press that partner button to open up for you to give. Whatever you give will be helping us to continue to bring this broadcast to people all over the world. Thank you for all of you that are giving, all my partners, all my friends, all those that are praying for me and my family. Thank you so much. All those that are praying for Finish Work International, for Discover Christian Center. Thank you so much. This message is reaching people all over the world. I'm also encouraging you to share this video with a friend. Tag a friend with this video. Share this broadcast. Let more people view this broadcast. Let more people watch this broadcast as they can be delivered from every form of wickedness. Thank you for watching this life-changing broadcast. Until I come your way soon, don't ever forget this. There is greatness in you.